Rev up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about picking the best project car for you to fix. Now when I was young and didn't have any money, every car me and my friends bought, hey, it was a project car. We had maybe a hundred bucks to buy a car. So the project was to go to the junkyards and buy the cheapest parts we could possibly get to get that hundred dollar car running so we could actually drive it around and get places. But today most project cars are different. Somebody wants a particular type of car that they want to fix up for various reasons, either to show it or to race it or to just have a cool old car that they can use on the weekend. Now over the years I've had many customers that had fun project cars that I helped them out with but I also had a lot of customers that bought the wrong project car and they just got stuck and mired in an endless money pit so you don't want to do that. So the first thing you need to decide about a project car is one how much money do you want to spend on that car and two how far can you go for fixing certain parts of it? Let's start out with the car itself. Let's say you got a limited budget. Well, you're not going to be going out and buying a 65 Mustang and fixing it all up. It's going to be too expensive to buy in the first place. And to get it really nice, it's probably going to cost way too much money. So in that case, say you were into Fords, why not look for something like a 65 Falcon? Find something that wasn't quite as popular. It might even be a little more unique if it's an old car. And you can still have fun with it, but not spend a small fortune. And when it does come time to buying a project car, realize that there's one myth out there that people are always believing in. I don't know why, but they think that all old cars are worth a lot of money, and even classic cars, they value them way too high. It's very easy to say this car is worth $60,000. But if you're one of those guys who's planning on fixing up a car and then selling it for $60,000, you might think twice. Most of the people I've known that have done that all lost money because it's real easy to talk how great these cars are, but when you got to get money for them from someone else, it's often very hard to sell those things. The market fluctuates a lot, and really, guys are very picky, and the odds that you have the exact one they want are pretty slim. And also, talking about money, realize how far can you go to actually fixing problems that your project car has. Certainly you're not going to have all the tools that I have lying around being a mechanic for 50 years, so you have to decide what kind of shape is the car going to be in that you're going to buy as a project car. A lot of guys, hey if they want an old Toyota, they just find one that it seems to run good, the engine and transmission runs and shifts, and if it needs a little body work and they want to do that, great. But as for actually rebuilding the engine and the transmission, most guys probably aren't skilled enough, don't have the tools to do it right. You don't really want to mess with a car like that. Because I'm warning you right now, I've seen it so much in the past. One guy will say, man, I got this really good uh, 460 engine, and I'll sell it to you cheap for your project car. And then you find out that engine isn't any good anymore. Now, if you're going older car, like 60s, 50s, even earlier, heck, the engines were a lot simpler then. Maybe you want to try to rebuild one. But in that case, you want to make sure you're buying a vehicle that you can readily get parts for and that the parts aren't going to be all that expensive. So in this case, buying something like a Porsche, hey, big mistake. The parts cost a fortune for those things. And now, there's billions of Toyotas out there. Parts are cheap. There's plenty of them in junkyards. Same with GM, Ford. There's a lot of cheaper parts available, and there's a lot of new parts for the old ones too because people tend to collect them and fix them up. But when it does come time to find a project car, you want to know a little bit about its history. Let's say you got a car that looks really good and it seems really cheap. Make sure that it wasn't in Hurricane Sandy or some other kind of flood because once they're flooded, the electronics get destroyed and it would be such a hassle to fix that as a project car. And here again, you really have to have it set in your mind what you're planning on doing to this project car. If it's a thing that you're going to go drifting with on the weekends, hey, you're going to do a lot of modifications. It doesn't have to be street legal. So there's a lot of little cheats you could do where you don't have to worry about a passing state inspection and stuff like that because you're not going to be driving it on the street. And if you're going to buy a car for a project that you're only going to drive on the weekends and you're going to spend a long time fixing it up, hey, you can take your time. You can buy parts from, say, China that might take months to get it on a boat. 
but you don't care. You're not in that big of a hurry. If it's a fun thing you're doing and you're going to toy around on the weekend, hey, let your imagination run wild. But if you're going to do a project car and you're going to do it as an everyday driver, make sure you get one that it's easy to get cheap parts. Pick a model that's sold widely, so there's a lot of them in salvage yards that you can get parts off and save a fortune. As an example, I had a customer had a Project Honda Accord. He got it real cheap because the whole back quarter panel was all smashed in. The tire was at a 90 degree angle, but he found one in a salvage yard and he bought the whole clip and the axles and everything. It only cost him 350 bucks for all those parts. That's why it's a good idea for your area. Just take a trip to some of the junkyards. See what kind of stuff they have lying around. Then you'll know, hey, if I get this particular project car, ah, there's a bunch of wrecked ones I can get a lot of good parts off of. And if you're serious about your project car, realize that welding equipment is a lot cheaper than it used to be. This is a real solid welding thing. I paid like 150 bucks for it. It really does solid arc welding. It's very easy to learn arc welding. Hey, you don't need to go and buy a super expensive TIG welder that the pros use to make every length perfect. If you got a project car you need to weld some serious stuff on, a stick welder works great. And if you're into that rat car look that a lot of people are into now, hey, the rougher the better. When you're done, you sand it all down and then you just clear coat all the metal parts so it's old and looks ragged but it's clear coated so it won't rust. Anybody can do that. It takes a real pro to get a good shine on a normal looking car, but a rat car, hey, anybody can do it. That's probably one of the reasons they're getting so popular. Now here's some good advice, especially if it's your first project car. Don't let your eyes be bigger than your wallet. Don't go out and say, oh, I got to get a classic Corvette or a classic Mustang. Those markets are just crowded with people charging too much money with cars that are basically falling apart. You're going to put too much money into them. Think a little bit lower for your first project car. And especially if you live up north in the Rust Belt, but really cars can move anywhere. So you want to go under the project car before you even buy it. Get a flashlight and a jack. And if you see the frame and everything is all rotted, walk away. Once the frames are rotted, it's really not worth fixing up a project car. But don't be disheartened because there's a lot of fun cars out there that you can make a project out of that don't cost all that much money. You can learn a lot and hey, you can have a lot of fun when you're finally done fixing it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.